Welcome to episode seven of Chakras and Shit, a playful look at spirituality. You can follow me on YouTube under the Chakras and Shit YouTube channel with a little star thingy on the eye because they don't like shit spelled out like shit. Uh, Apple and Spotify podcasts and we're live on Facebook right now with my Reiki shamanic teacher, shamanic Reiki teacher. Uh, Joanna, who I met in Bali in November of 2018. I was on the front end of a what ended up being a 13 and a half month journey of opening up my heart and giving back and, and volunteering in some disaster stricken areas. And the very first stop on my journey was, was to Ubud, Bali. And my mind, the spiritual capital of the world, I, it just the power there, the energy of the jungle and the people and the, the health and the, the practices um, led me to you within the first week. And I just want to give a little introduction to Joanna. You were, you're now in Ibiza, 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 Spain. Ibiza, Ibiza. Ibiza, Spain. Or as I say, Ibiza. Ibiza. <laughs> Not that that's correct, but yeah. <laughs> and you've been traveling for about six years. I think you were in London, um, left for for Bali and Ibiza, and you've kind of gone back and forth, um, sharing your practices of shamanic Reiki teacher, you're a ceremony facilitator, uh, you hold inner wisdom women's retreats. And mm -hmm. I also know you as a singer, a guitar player, a writer, you're probably an actress. I, I, bet, you're, <laughs> I bet you're an athlete. Um, what don't you do? Um, I'm trying to whittle it down a little bit. I'm cutting some things out. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm fine tuning. Um, I, I like lots of things. It's, it's hard to, to just pick one thing for me. I'm, you know, I like the creative arts. I love the healing arts and I'm kind of blending them and bringing them all together into more kind of tailored um, offerings, if you like. Nice. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I gotta say my, it's, it's super ironic that I have a podcast called Chakras and Shit. And I appreciate <laughs> that chakras is typically spelt with a C. But this, mm -hmm. is, this is marketing people. It's an S and an S. And I believe you were the first person to ever point out my chakras. You were certainly the first person to put a stone on my chakras. And you led me through uh, a, Reiki, a Reiki session that felt part psychic, part visualization. Um, and I got to say, every time I do anything like this, it's always part healing. And, mm -hmm. and you led me through that journey. So if, if you don't mind, you're the expert. Um, do you mind telling me a little bit about that practice and, and perhaps what you did for me as well? For sure. Well, where to start? Reiki is, for me, it's the foundation of my teachings and what I do. But I also do quite a lot more than that with weaving in shamanic practices as well. But Reiki in, in its kind of simplest form is a form of energy work and we work with the seven main chakras in the body and it's bringing those into an alignment and also clearing through any blockages that may be getting in your way, whether that's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And I teach level one, two and three, which is the master level and I'm also teaching teachers as well. Um, and when I do a session with somebody like you, for example, that's never received before, um, my intention is for you to be really open to receive whatever wants to come through for you. So the more open the receiver is for the energy to flow through them, the more they receive. And that can be, you know, you can receive energetically, you can receive through visions, colors, physical sensations in the body many different things can come through for the receiver and like as for you you had quite a profound experience and it was kind of the beginning of this kind of new way of looking at things for you um so it can be very kind of simple and gentle for some people when they first receive and it can also be really really deep and profound and have huge clearings on on different layers of the body um, and, the, and the reason I love Reiki so much with it being energy work is because we're not just working with the energy body, we're working with all other layers of the body as well. So for me, it's just, it's really profound work. It's very powerful and I love it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it showed and, and your enthusiasm towards it and the way you set the ambiance, I had no idea what was coming. Uh, I, I threw a million rupiah at you and said, let's go. And <laughs> rupiah, by the way, not equivalent to dollars. I'm not that rich. And 
you, I had everything from a childhood trauma come up to a vision for the future. I remember just feeling light and free and open. And honestly, it started what I didn't know to, to be a spiritual journey. And, and the next 13 months, I, I, everything was just different after that. So mm. what is it you're feeling? What is it you're tapping into? What is it you're doing? Because, you know, these are the seven chakras. And <laughs> I, I'm sure I had a blockage there. I know I had a blockage there. Uh, I certainly wasn't grounded. So, you know, I might have been okay in the old solar plexus. But this one, I didn't even know existed. So what, <laughs> okay. what, is, it, what is it you're doing? Without okay, well... Firstly, I don't really feel like I'm doing much, to be honest. When, when I work with Reiki, I'm working as a channel and for the light, the universal life force energy to move through me and to come through my hands into the space and for the receiver to receive whatever they are ready for. So when I open up the space, I'm also invoking guides, spirits, angels, ancestors, you know, the elements. Um, I also tap into the directions and I, and I really open up more of a, it's not just about me laying my hands on and doing like healing like this. It's a, it's like a shamanic space. And it's also me working as a channel to receive messages that might want to come through for you. Mm. And also just really allowing you that space to receive whatever you need in that moment. And it may not be what you want, but it will definitely be what you need for your mm. deepest healing. And I really believe that people come in, their soul calls them when they're ready to receive this work. And the more open they are to receive, the more they're going to receive. And so if there's any kind of resistance or energy around like not fully wanting to receive, you know, people will get some kind of surface level receiving, but not the real depth to which it can go. And there's, you know, the possibilities are infinite as far as I'm concerned. And um, so, yeah, I'm working as a channel and a facilitator of the space. But really, it's the person that's receiving. It's their responsibility for their own self-healing and for their journey and their experience. So I could do two sessions exactly the same on two separate people, but they will receive completely different experiences. And so that's you know, it's their role to also be open to that. Um, and then I just hold that space and guide and intuitively move to wherever I feel there needs work and clearing and sending always just unconditional love and light into the, into the body. Um, and there was one other thing. I'm really just empowering the receiver to empower themselves to do the healing, to do the work, to, it's really like a soft and subtle awakening into more clarity of self. So it's really about empowering the receiver as well. It's not like, I'm not a healer. I'm not going in as I'm going to heal you. It's like your responsibility to do the work yourself. I'm just assisting a little bit. Fair enough. And, and you, a couple of things came up there that I, I want to clarify these terms because um, I knew you as, as I, I knew it as Reiki. But what does shamanic Reiki mean? What's, what's that word shamanic mean? Mm. The reason I bring in the shamanic element is because I, the way in which I work is mm, deeper than just the energy work, the Reiki lineage. So like I was saying before about setting up the space, when I invoke the directions and I invoke the elements and I invoke my spirit guides into the space, this is, this is kind of ritual, this is shamanic practice. So it's not just about me being the channel, it's about all of the guides that are working around me and supporting me doing the work. And so this is also a way of kind of that, sh that shamanism in a way, um, and the way in which I bring different tools like the sacred smoke, the palo santo and the sage, the way I use mm. music, like a shamanic drum for clearing. And so there's different tools and different ways in which I open up the space that kind of brings in that shamanic element. So I'm not saying that I'm a shaman, but it's just shamanic practices. Um, and I, I love yogi is the, the shamanic path of the awakening heart. And it's really oh, okay. about that kind of walking with integrity on, on Pachamama and, and really having that connection to nature, you know, because we've become so disconnected in, the, in, our, in our Western world, especially with all the technology and all the things. 
that we've forgotten that connection to nature, that we are nature. And so that shamanic way is also about that connection to her and being in reverence to the sacred waters, the earth, the fire, the sun, the moon, the stars, the cosmos. Mm -hmm. So it's about bringing all of that in together and realizing that we are all one. Yeah. And, and I would never have understood this prior to, to that session with you. And it, it led me to do an ayahuasca ceremony about, about nine months later. And I didn't really understand how connected we were to the earth. You know, I value nature. It's one of my two core values, fun and nature. And I didn't really understand until we got into some serious plant medicine and, and our connection with Gaia. And, um, you know, I, I know you've done, you've done a little bit of work on that as well. Have you ever done ayahuasca specifically? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. How many times? Curious. The first one I ever did was, May 2016 and I worked with this plant medicine for two years around 10 ceremonies or oh, so wow. in those two years and then in April 2018 so after two years of doing it I got a very clear message that my time with this medicine was done <laughs> that's what she said I was like yeah. she said you know what you need to do go do it enough of this so I said thank you very much I hear the message and um, I've been working more with um, San Pedro yeah. um, or Wachuma, as it's called, it's a cactus. And it's a very ground, more of a grounding medicine. And it's taken as you walk with the earth in the day, whereas ayahuasca is done at night. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been working more with this medicine in the last two years. And that led me to Peru to um, do a three week pilgrimage last year as well, which pretty much changed my life <laughs> again not really say much more than that i mean there is more but that's it simply it changed my life <laughs> change your life in what way well i think i went as always with the intention of receiving exactly what i need in this moment in time you know kind of letting go of any expectations or needing to reach anything in particular and just trusting that whatever my soul is ready for right now is what I'm going to receive. So during the three weeks I was walking with 18 others and about five shamans and we walked all through the sacred valley and probably I think we did seven or eight ceremonies in that time and each one you know we went to these sacred and powerful sites and portals and so each one was giving me a certain kind of deep message and clearing and how did it change my life? I mean, I think it's more about the, the huge, huge shedding of so many old stories, old beliefs, all these things that were just getting in the way of me fully stepping into my true authentic self. It's, it's also a deep remembering. And so I was clearing all the obstacles you know as i was walking and being with the medicine and clearing like physically energetically and in the process really fully stepping into me my truth who i am oh i remember who i am now thank you for reminding me i don't wow. know where it went <laughs> like, <laughs> <lost>. <laughs> um and so it was really that the way in which it changed my life was just this just getting rid of the shit, basically. Can I swear on here? I can swear, right? The name <laughs> of the show is Chakras and Shit. Okay, good. <laughs> You're allowed to swear. Okay, great. <laughs> Ridding all the shit, clearing the way, and just having the courage to just keep moving forwards and trusting, trusting my, my path. Mm. Wow. That's, that's beautiful because you seemed like you were there, there, wherever you were when I met you, you were, you were levels above me and none of that was hard. And, <laughs> and to think that you're just continuing to, to remove blockages and, and grow into your power, into your light, it, it, you never, you're prob probably never going to stop, right? Like, like where you're at now is the most authentic version of you. Who's to say you don't learn something this week and then next week you're something more or less, probably more. I think, exactly. I think it's a continuous journey. I don't think we ever reach a point where we go, I made it. I'm yeah. here. <laughs> I did everything. I'm full of wisdom. I learned yeah. all my lessons. I'm good. No yeah. more. <laughs> no more. No more lessons. And I think, 
especially as a as a as a teacher and somebody who shares this work i think it's also part of my my kind of my duty if you like of my my work to continue to unravel more of myself and and learn more for myself too so as much as i'm teaching i'm also learning and receiving um and so for example in lockdown i was i was sharing and teaching all the time and I was also on trainings myself to deepen my own practice and my own work because the deeper I go the more I can assist others in deepening their own practice and journey also and for me it's I didn't go searching for this work and for this path it found me like I was working in London as an art director and a graphic designer and I was on that whole journey and but something in me my first day in my first job, it was like this voice came down as I was pushing some shoes around a page and said, what are you doing? You're supposed to be helping people. This is not what you're meant to be doing. And I was like, shit, but I've just studied for like five years to get here and I've done all the internships and I've done all the things. And now I'm sitting in my first job in London and I'm like, yeah, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> And then it was just, uh, it took me seven years to then move out and get to Ibiza, but the process was all perfect and now I'm here. So it's all good. And yes, beautiful. it continues. Yeah, beautiful. And, and, and I've, I've known you now for, for about two years and I've seen, I've seen some pretty monumental changes in, in you and your journey just since, since call it November of, of, of 18. And one was your name, right? You're, you, you were Joe. You're Joe to me. It's Joe. And, and one day you declared, I'm no longer Joe. I am now Joanna. And do you mind telling me about that journey and why? Yeah, well, it was actually about a month or two after I'd met you and I had this numerology reading. And so I was, I was born with the name Joanna. Well, given it to me by my parents, of course. And um, I've just always shortened it to Joe. It's easier. It's just, it's just Joe. And this numerologist said, Actually, because of the numerology of your full name, Joanna, it's, it's better for you to use this um, because of the frequency that it holds. And it's going to allow you to kind of step more deeply into your work because Joe is kind of like the old you, it's the young girl and you're stepping into your womanhood. And so even though I had so much resistance to it, and I still do, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I still introduce myself as Joe sometimes, I changed everything to do with my work. And it was Joanna, which is my name, but it did feel like a big step. And even though it was just a name, it felt, you know, it felt big. <laughs> and right. it still changes. Well, I can see that. You, today you're Joey. So that name came about. So the shaman that I've been working with for a couple of years now, she just, she calls me Joey. And it really rang true for me because actually that's what my dad calls me. And so for me, it kind of then became my name whilst, whilst circling with everyone in Peru. And because I have such a deep connection now to that work and to that lineage, I felt, I've kind of just stuck. And so I'm just like Joey as well. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Fair enough. And the Australians, really like. the, the Australians who are listening right now, you know what they're thinking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, you, I love... You've done a couple of blogs that I've read and, and I thought they were profound. And I've always enjoyed your writing. I've read some of your poetry uh, either on Instagram or on Facebook. And you're just, you're, you're talented and deep and soulful and incredible. And anyone who's listening uh, or watching this, just follow, follow Joey. Uh, Thank you. Follow her blogs. It's, it's, <laughs> it's powerful stuff. Um, and, and I love the fact that you, you refer to yourself as, as a heart follower and a soul leader. Those two things just, I love that. You know, it, it sounds to me as authentic as it gets and that you're really truly stepping into your power, as you say. With your blogs, you, you, you had your one, a little while ago you wrote one that you had five questions and, and you started your blog with what's really important. This is something you were questioning. Um, do you mind if I ask you these five questions and just see what happens and what comes for you right now? I mean, yeah, it was funny that like, I'm like, which five questions did I write in that blog post? Because I hadn't written in so long. Okay. Like if you read the actual post, it talks about how I'd had this creative block in this kind of this whole year, actually. Yeah. And when I like kind of made myself get to this point of like, I need to write something. 
this piece literally just channeled out of me and then it just went up and I can't really remember <laughs> like exactly what I said. So I have to read my own stuff back and go, oh, wow, I wrote that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, ask me the questions. I'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, good. Because when did you write the blog? Do you remember roughly? Like a week ago. Oh, <laughs> already forgot. That particular but, post, yeah. I moved, I moved on. Brent's going into the past again. Here he goes. So if I had to ask you this question, what comes off? What, what, what do you feel here when I ask you, what is really important? What's really important for me? What's important is our connection to nature. Mm. Uh, love and connection. Supporting community and family. Remembering that we are one. And that we all came from the same place. We'll all return. And that we it's important for us to come together as that kind of family and that community, because there's a lot of separation happening, especially in this time. And we're kind of, again, becoming more disconnected in a way, even though in some ways we're more connected through technology. Mm -hmm. There's also, there's a little bit of a disconnect also, the separation. So I think this coming together is important. And remembering the beauty and simplicity I think we like to overcomplicate things. We like to busy ourselves. We like to distract ourselves. We create all sorts of things for ourselves that are unnecessary. And so for me, what's important is also simplicity in the way we navigate our lives and the way that we live, the way we just be. Mm. It's important to be, not to just be doing all the time. And I'm also saying this and I'm saying it to myself, you know, it's still, rewiring that must do 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 it's like what about if i just be for a minute that's important well yeah and and covid i see people freaking out all over the place about covid and and how it's altered our lives and changed so many things i, I it, it's been one of the biggest blessings of my life mm. you know I, I returned home literally my childhood home you know having in some ways been traveling for 26 years and I got to be, I got to be still. I built a little bird sanctuary and I just downloaded and did some coaching and, and was coached on a on whole bunch of loose ends that were happening in my life. And it was nice to just ground and be and be still. We, we saw whales come through this inlet here for the first time in people mm. say 20 years. There was apparently dolphins going through um, Venice. I was in Venice two years ago and it was, there was no dolphins there. There was just nothing but motors, you know, and, and, the world, sure, the economy, all the capitalists are freaking out. Oh my God, I lost money in the stock market, blah, blah, blah. You know, but the world shut down and what a blessing. And if you, if you, if you took it as that, if you allowed it to be, right? So. Absolutely. It's just about perspective, I think. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and your second question is perfect for that. You know, what am I here to do? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and I really, I really feel like that time or well, this time that we've been in has asked, you know, people have been asked this of themselves, you know, what am I here to do? Because a lot of people have lost, lost jobs and there's been a lot of change, you know, maybe like breakdowns of relationships and it's, you know, people are asking these questions. And I think for me personally, I, it was interesting because towards the end of last year, I was kind of feeling like, I don't know if I want to teach anymore. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. And then lockdown happened and all of a sudden the work just like flooded in. And it was more and more and more about the Reiki and the teaching. And I was like, okay, this is, this is what I'm meant to be doing in this moment. I don't need to question it actually. It's just the universe is showing me. Um, and so this whole thing of like, what am I here to do is... I think it's an important question to ponder upon, but also to trust that the universe already knows what you're here to do. So if you're a little lost or confused, my invitation is to sit daily in meditation and ask, what am I, what am I here to do? Show me, show me the way. This is kind of how I've navigated my life the last few years in this nomadic toing and froing. And when there's been times of, yeah, I'm not sure if this is right, or maybe I need to go in this direction. I just ask, show me, and then the universe will just show me through 
different means through messages, you know? I do so, know. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's this surrender yeah. experience. The, well, I don't know all. The surrender but I, experiment. The surrender experiment, right? It, exactly. it, it, be in flow. You know, I've used the word flow so many times in the last you know, month since I started this show. I, it's like my favorite word now. Flow, flow. I'm always in flow. If it's not in flow, 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 flow. But, and, and it's all about the flow. It's, it's all about the flow. But it, it's, it's removing that resistance. And, and, and this sh learning about chakras, which is so fun for me. Uh, and, and I've done a couple of energy healings, you know, fourth and fifth dimension kind of stuff. When you're out of balance, when, sorry, I love using I statements. When I'm out of balance, I, I feel out of balance. I, I, yeah. I fight myself. The voices continue. I'm inactive. I don't do the thing I know I should do. But, but when I'm in flow and, and things come to me, like this podcast, for example, it just came to me and boom, here it is. It, there's less resistance. You're lighter. You're freer. You're, you're, I'm maybe who I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. And, and you said something in regards to being the most authentic version of ourselves. And I went around the world saying that, that the most important thing, the, the most important gift you can give the world is to be the most, most authentic version of yourself. I said that cause I read that. And I didn't really fully understand that statement until COVID hit and I got still and I really started to, feel balanced and and for me it was a return home where my roots grew deep and now i can fly high i feel grounded right and whatever it is that people are stuck on whatever it is you're you're feeling whether you're at the edge of your comfort zone whether you're resisting your boss whether you know i have a friend who's been in the same industry for 20 years and, and i can tell he just wants out he just wants out but the money is flowing and but i can tell there's more there explore it, jump two feet in, try something new. Remember what you loved as a child, you know, mm. play the guitar, whatever it is, you know, my, my encouragement to everyone out there is just try it, jump in. Absolutely. I hope to that. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and you know, you, you, your, your third question is, is who am I here to be? You know, who, who am I here to be? Well, what's the most authentic version of, of Joanna? You know, is, is, is it now? Are, are you being who you're meant to be? I think so, but I, f I also feel like I'm still working on it in, yeah. a, in a way. And actually, I have a good, timely story for you on this because I, as I shared, was a designer. And over the last six years, I've still been doing bits of design work here, there, here and there, you know, just little bits. And it's good. It's kept me financially stable and it supported my, my traveling and my living in Bali and Ibiza. But it also has in a way energetically pulled me away from really fully stepping into the work that I'm doing now. And when I had that numerology reading about my full name, she also said something about turning 37, which I did in April. Shh, don't tell anyone. And <laughs> no one watches the show. It's okay. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. It's not recording or anything. And she said from 37 onwards, you're going to be stepping away from work that is no longer in alignment with you and fully into your actual work or what you're here to be for me it's all the same thing and um so, but i kept saying yes to two bits of design work and begrudgingly working with a couple of people although i had one in particular who i was happy to do design work for because it's in full alignment with this path still it was design and anyway long story short i had a hard drive with everything on it all the design software, all the design work over the last few years, amongst many other things. And then just one day it decided not to connect to my laptop. So I spent two weeks stressing and not being able to get it fixed and all the things. And then I was like, you know what? The universe just took it away and said, this is not what you're here to do anymore. Hmm. It's not who you're here to be. We're gonna, if, you don't know, if you don't get rid of it, we're getting rid of it for you. And it just went... And I just had to let go and surrender and just be like, okay, start over and just continue moving forward and let go of the old me. That's just not, that's just not me anymore. And so initially, even though it was stressful, I was also like, okay, I get the message. It's loud and clear. Mm. <laughs> and just like, and also I, it really felt like a sense of relief in, in letting that go. I was like, now all of the energy that I was putting in that direction, I can now 
bring here and channel it this way. And, and you know, as proof of that, since not having the hard drive and saying no to a couple of design jobs, new newer work has come in, which is in more alignment, which is the ceremonies and the teaching and the healing. And that's, that's what I'm here to be, do, you know. Love that. <laughs> I love that. And, and uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Love, Pray, she wrote a, a book called Big Magic. Have, have you read? Love Big Magic. You, okay. So the idea that ideas are living things, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that you being a designer and all those things, hey, hey, Joanna, hey, Joey, uh, it's me. Um, design me. Do this, do this, do this. Hey, I'm over here. Okay. Okay. Give me some attention. Okay. Then you, they go away for six months. Then it comes back. Hey, hey, really design me, design me, design me. Okay, yeah, I will, certainly will. And then eventually they go, okay, well, you don't love, you don't want to be with me, bye. I'm going to someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that analogy that, that ideas and thoughts and, and the, the, the next great thing, the next invention, whatever it is, that they're living pieces of energy just like us. Totally. You know? and, and that was there for you if you chose to go for it mm -hmm. before your hard drive crashed, right? But, mm -hmm. but you didn't. And, and that's that to me, that's the definition of flow. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are in a time of flow. I mean, we always are and always were. But to really let go of the reins and to fully surrender to your life, to your path, knowing that everything is happening for you and guiding you, you know, this is this is the full the surrender of your life, you know, and the more as you were saying, the more I kind of let go and the more I flow and allow things to just weave in, the more and the more I'm in alignment with my truth and myself, the more things just continue to open and expand in a really e easy and graceful way. And so with my work, what I'm inviting others to do, interestingly, is to empower them to, to tap into that part of them that's true. You know, what are you, what are you here to do? What are you here to be? Who, who are you? Who, who are we? You know, and these huge questions. I don't know the answers either, mm. by the way. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, you know, but I'm moving towards and moving in, in a way that feels true to me, which is doing, doing this work. Yeah. Love it. And, and I, I wonder how much you believe or what you know about, sort of our, our soul contracts, if you will, or, or our purpose on earth. Uh, my first real energy clearing was with Verena, who uh, was on episode three and 3B. And she, she led me through an energy clearing session where I was in Bali. It was my second when I went back to Bali. And she was in, in Vienna. And it was more than just the seven chakras. It was, it was multidimensional, mm -hmm. up above, way above Gaia. And, and she was doing her work up here. And she, she told me I had a, a light blue crystalline light body. And, and do you know what that means? What does it mean to you? Well, she said, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm one of those people who could be anything. So some people have specific things. You're meant to be a doctor. You're meant to be a healer. You're meant to be a, a hard worker. You're meant to be whatever. You're meant to be redheaded. I don't know. So, but for, for me, <laughs> it sounded like that was something that was predetermined for me before I was ever put on earth. That this, mm -hmm. that being in alignment with that is, is how I can express myself to my fullest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I, I believe that humans on earth have choice at every single moment of every single day. Absolutely. We, we can tell ourselves stories. We can put blocks in our own way. We can be as big or as small as we want to be because our thoughts create our, our reality. But given that you've told me before that you're a psychic and, or at least have psychic tendencies and, and with some of the work you're doing being tapped in, um, how connected are we on earth to what we were meant to be on earth for? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, and I think that's going to be different for everybody. I think the more people that give themselves space and time to be and to do things like meditation and spiritual practices, I think they deepen that connection to their higher selves. For those that don't have those practices and are more kind of in the, um, the kind of doing mode and the distraction and kind of doing, 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 mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's like a slight disconnect from tapping into source, to spirit, to, to your higher self. 
And so I, I believe that some people come in with a deep knowing really early on and it's encouraged as they grow up and then they come, they come into their fullest self early. And then there's others who maybe get veered off the path through, you know, after childhood into the teens, into their twenties and beyond. And some will have some big epiphany somewhere through life and it'll tra change their whole trajectory. Yeah. You know, whether that's illness or death or something like that's a major life event. And there's others who may just continue down a certain way that isn't maybe what they fully came here to do or is it, you know? So I, I think that there's, I think we know if we give ourselves time and space, does this feel true to me? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? It's yeah. just whether you give yourself that time and that self-inquiry to, to ask. How awoke are you, right? Are you conscious? Who's, who's, who's driving the bus? Um, that, that's where I go with this is I feel like I was pretty unconscious for my 20s and 30s. I've since done forgiveness work on that. I look back at that guy and go, I honor him. And, and, and people say, you're always doing your best. Yeah, sure. You know, I'd like to think I could have done better in many situations, but let's just say I was always doing my best. So I look back and go, that's okay. It got me here. Exactly. Right. But from this, you always have a choice from this point forward. When do you want to wake up? When do you, when is your awakening? When are you going to, going to, when are, when am I going to be ready to, to live in my fullest expression? And, and for me, it was early December, 2017. I had an awakening and it was in my office at noon. It was, I finished a book called unfuck yourself. You're allowed to swear on this show. And I made four major changes to my life, a commitment to myself and to the people around me. And it's led me on this journey. What's interesting to me since then is this idea that there's light workers have been called over, yeah. the, over the course of the last three years, I want to say. Sounds like you were called six years ago-ish. I'll come back to that if you, yeah. I, I want to hear your story for sure. I want to hear how you became okay. a light worker. So it feels like there's a higher responsibility to show the, show the non light workers, the people like me three years ago, how much deeper this can go, how much more connected we all are. And it, you know, the Schumann resonance and the, and the, uh, mm -hmm. the earth, uh, the energy around the earth turning at a higher frequency than it ever has in years. You look at what's going on in the U S it feels like there's this big battle going on right now. This, this almost, conscious unconscious war um and and my hope is the ones with the hearts win you know um so i'm just so just <laughs> just just curious your journey to to becoming a light worker what that really means um and how do we find more of us well i believe that when i was young I, there was a connection to something deeper than I remember I lived in Arizona for three years between the age of five and eight. And I have this really, really, really clear memory of traveling through Mexico with my family. And we went into this store and this store, I remember the music that was playing and everything. It was like Enya or something. <laughs> yeah, and there were these huge Mexican tapestry, tapestries and dream catchers and crystals and stones and all these things I'd never seen before. Yet when I walked into this store, I was like, I felt like I was home and I was mm. looking at all these things and the incense was burning and I was touching all these crystals. And I was like, wow, where am I? Like, I feel so at home here. And at the time I must've been six or seven. And I was like, there's something about this place, but because my parents weren't that way inclined, it kind of got, lost in in my childhood so i felt a deep connection to something which i've kind of you know this native american way which i i will also come back to and then you know then i went through school and i did all the things and i always found some connection to like i loved reading books on like astrology and kind of spiritual help books if you like self-help books and i was always intrigued by this I was kind of seeking for something outside of myself of like, there's more to this life. Like there's something more, there's something deeper. I don't know what it is, but there's something. 
So I loved reading these books and I, I kind of always had that connection. However, there was also this other side of me that was very much in that world of got to have a career, got to be successful, got to earn money, got to buy a house, got to do all the things. And so I was very much like being pulled between worlds, if you like, sure. until, you know, the thing that really like catapulted me into this life and this way was when I, well, I was in London for seven years and I was sick, you know, the whole time I was there pretty much. Wow. So that was what got me into Reiki because I was looking for alternative therapies for myself, started doing self healing and it just changed my whole trajectory. And through that work, I then moved and expanded and continued and continued because for me to clear the disease that was in my body and to self heal, it needed to take a holistic approach to that. So it wasn't just, you know, the physical body, it was the emotions, the mental, my environment, what I was putting in my body, all, all the things. And that's what led me to Ibiza initially um, and into this work. So there's always been a, a connection somewhere, but it was, it kind of took something big to shift me out of where I was also, yeah. Okay, and you, and you said you were, you're touching on the Native American part there as well. Yeah, when I when we lived in Arizona, I always felt this um, connection to their art and to their way, and there was just something about their. Um, my my parents had some of their jewelry, and I just I just remember always feeling real deep connection to the Native American tribe, and it came through really strongly in my when I was training in the Reiki as well that I was kind of there was something in my lineage that connected me to them and then I had this really really beautiful um, healing session when I was giving somebody Reiki about three and a half years ago and as I was giving the session I brought him out of the session and he said oh I saw three Native American people working with you and I was like oh wow. that maybe they're your guides he was like, no, 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 they're, they're yours. They're, they're working with you. The elders are working with you. And so for me, it was just this beautiful confirmation that I did have these guides really working with me. And so that's why people will say they feel like eight hands on them when I'm working with them. I'm like, that's, that's just my tribe. <laughs> mm. So, wow. yeah. Do you, do you have a name? Do you have a Native American name? No. No? Okay. I need to look into that. Yeah, let's. Uh, I don't need another name, though. <laughs> we, yeah, you need another name. Um, yeah, we. Uh, there's got to be a. If we Google, make my name a Native American name. I'm sure there's some sort of there's ceremony. Probably, could use. probably yeah. something. There's something for every, everything these days. <laughs> yeah, I should put you in touch with Tony. I, I, he might even be watching now. But uh, Tony, my my guest from the first episode in Nepal, uh, he's very tapped into the Native American um, bit. I I I know nothing about it. I I grew up. 30 miles from the border, but um, that's something I've never really explored. I don't have any knowledge on. Um, but I can say when I, when I was having my, my ayahuasca healing ceremony on the Friday night, um, there was visualizations of some very Native American healers for sure. So Amazing. Yo Johan says you don't talk about your experience. It's, it's for you, but they're, they're out there or in there or up there <laughs> or down there. They're somewhere. <laughs> And I just want to go back to you that so you asked, um, like, how do we find more light workers? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's a case of us finding more. I just think that they, you know, that they're, they're there and they're coming in. And I think uh, even this, this year also, it's been a huge yeah. kind of shift and an awakening for a lot of people. And I think that's why my, my work with the Reiki teaching expanded quite a lot during that time, because people were wanting answers i think and they they had that time to do the more introspective work and to ask these deeper questions within themselves and it was giving them a tool to do the self-healing and, and opening into that space so yeah i think people are just feeling it they're feeling it and stepping into that and that's that's it right there let's start asking better questions of ourselves of the people around us you know let's 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 challenge people let's let's use our voice you know um lindsay lab stewart who i i hope to get on the show one day uh she has this beautiful piece of art and she's a she's a do you know lindsay lab stewart i might have talked about her when i was in valley bridge she's the girl who played this the song on the ukulele in the u.s when trump was nominating kavanaugh and there was the sexual assault 
um, issues from 35 years earlier. And Trump said something along the lines of, it's a real scary time for boys because girls who you might've assaulted or raped in your past, they can come back and get you. And she's like, a scary time for boys because you might get caught? Are you freaking kidding me? So she wrote this sarcastic song about how a, a scary time for boys, come on, mate, it's, it's, been, it's always been scary for women, right? So she wrote this, she, I have had this up as my Facebook profile picture a couple of times, and it says, I woke up, and then she crossed out woke, and then I spoke up. Mm, and I, I just, I love that thought, because you can wake, you can be ready, but what are you going to do about it? When are you going to use your voice? You know, who are you going to help? When are you going to be in service? You know, and, and a big part of my journey over the last few years has been just doing it, jumping in and, and helping people and going to disaster stricken areas. And, and I'm now doing, doing coaching and, and asking better questions of people, you know? And, and I just, I feel like that's, that's what we need, especially now. And then this racism thing, I look at that and I go, that we're, we're finally asking some real questions, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're challenging so that people don't just hide behind their, their, their prejudices or their bullshit anymore. Right. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, everyone is finding their voice in this time. There's, there's opinions, there's different perspectives on, on everything that's unfolding. And, and I think that this is, this is amazing. And I think that it's also important to come back into your own center Mm -hmm. and to find what's true to you because with so many opinions out there and so many different platforms sharing so many different things i think it's easy to get like swayed and pulled into different directions that may not be true to you and so i think again it comes back to does that resonate with me and if it doesn't i can i can leave that aside and follow what feels true to me and just keep keep on that track because the more people that are in in that vibration of truth and love and alignment that then gives kind of permission for others to do the same and when because when we're in that frequency that's that's what the planet needs is for mm -hmm. all of us to be in our truth in, in alignment because if we're all off center well everything else is going to be off center so we need that peace and that harmony within and is and the planet's fighting back right now you can see it everywhere the, the, the planet is going I'm sending Greta to give you guys a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a message and then I'm going to burn some shit and I'm going to destroy some stuff and you guys are going to sort this out or you're not, or I'm going to, I'm going to be done with you and we're going to start this whole thing again. Right. But exactly. She doesn't need us. Right? We <laughs> yeah. need her. Yeah. A hundred percent. But she is a direct reflection of our internal world, you know? So there's chaos going on internally for many people and so this internal chaos is being reflected and it's being, you know, it's like, wake up. It's time to wake up. Like, are you actually living your life in a way that serves mm -hmm. the, the, you know, humanity, the planet, the way we, you know, we can't continue with the way we are. That's for sure. You know, so bringing more conscious awareness to the way that we are actually treading, the way that we are walking. Are we being conscious? Are we moving with love? Are we moving with fear? Are we moving in a way that serves the planet? And, you know, that comes down to the things that we eat, the way in which we work, the way in which we travel, all, all of the things. And so I think, yeah, the, when the world stopped, you know, mm -hmm. March onwards this year in 2020, I think it was a real deep call for these questions and to really go inside and, yeah, start getting curious. Exactly. And, and hopefully not everyone's going to lead with love, right? Some people just are going to lead with hate. It's, sometimes it's generational. Sometimes it's childhood. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're just a dick. Whatever it is, you know, <laughs> we hope that, that by sharing no our love. Say, say again, sorry? No judgment. <laughs> no judgment. You're allowed to say dick on the show, but I, I, hey, I've been a, there's a lot of people listening and watching and that I have friends on Facebook that go, Brent, you've been a dick many times and I go, yeah, I know. I'm trying hard to be less of a dick these days. Um, and I want to talk about, about cacao, cacao. How do you say it? Cacao. Cacao. Oh. So tell me about cacao, cacao. So just in, in regards to plant medicine and uh, the healing characteristics of cacao, I heard our friend, our, our mutual friend, Lisa, she talked about cacao all the time. 
I've never experienced it. I don't know what it is. Uh, I read your most recent blog about cacao and I'm, I'm just super curious. Tell me about cacao and what is it and what does it do and how do I get sure. some? <laughs> well, it's a medicine of the heart and because of the, its properties, it's said to, to open up the heart. Mm. And so the cacao pods, they grow on trees. It's a sacred plant in Central and South America. And inside there are the beans, which are then made into different forms of cacao. So like powder, butter, um, the, the ceremonial grade cacao, which we, we then make for ceremony. And so this has been used for thousands of years by the Mayans, and they used it for spiritual and meditative practices and for, for its medicinal properties as well. And like I wrote in the, the piece earlier was that I really feel that when we sit in ceremony with this heart medicine, I, I believe that kind of that their ancient ways and their wisdom and their traditions really come through in the medicine when the space is held. And so it's not like um, ayahuasca or San Pedro that are really um, more kind of out there hallucinogenic medicines. It's more, it's much more gentle on the body and on the soul. And depending on who's holding a ceremony, it can be done in different ways and is usually blend with, blended with other modalities such as um, like sound journeys or dance or you know more meditative introspective journeys so it's usually held as a ceremony with the cacao and then adding in like the singing or sharing or an additional element um, and for me I mean I've been working with this medicine for a few years but more so in the last you know few few months doing the training and now it's like I kind of never really had an intention to serve it as a plant medicine. I never had any intention of doing this at all. I never had an intention to teach Reiki either, but that just happened. And so this kind of just, interestingly, that the training came towards me and initially I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Don't have any, don't, don't need to do it. No. Nah. And then something just came in and just went, you have to do this training. And so I was like, okay. And I did it and it was really quite a profound experience because there was a global family of us training together and we all sat in ceremony for like seven weeks in these weekly calls and all this additional work and training that we did and I finished the training and I'd gone through a huge process in that time and then I just started putting it out there and and like when I started teaching Reiki it was almost like the universe just kept saying yes 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 and it just flowed and the same thing is happening for me with the cacao ceremonies here in Ibiza as well. Um, it just feels like, okay, this is what's needed now, you know, inviting people to tune deeply into their heart wisdom, into their knowing. So it kind of links into everything we've been talking about of people stepping into their truth and in alignment with who they are. This is another tool to access that. And so it's a very gentle way of allowing yourself to really feel into your heart, tune into the frequency of the medicine and, you know, feel also this wisdom that comes through from these ancient traditions. And there's no adverse side effects. It's just, I feel amazing. <laughs> and um, it's full of, full of good stuff as well, like magnesium and potassium and these things that help with your mood and your energy levels and but without the kind of jitters that you would have with coffee so it's great i love it <laughs> you need some <laughs> how, how long does the ceremony typically last an hour or two depending okay. on how it's facilitated yeah okay and and with covid and virtualness is it possible to do these? Like, let's say, let's say some people from Vancouver wanted to get together and have you lead them through a ceremony. Is that possible that we would purchase cacao and make it and, and have you lead us through it? Or how does that whole thing work? Absolutely. Okay. And I think that this is what this time has been really great for. It's shown us that we can connect through the quantum field, through this collective consciousness, which we are you know, and that we can connect in this way and that it's really just about that intention and connecting through the ethers, you know, because ev everything's energy anyway. And so that intention and tapping into that is what connects us all. 
And so holding online ceremonies, which I have been doing some of, and it is really just a case of people coming in with their cacao and tuning in on the screen and then I can guide them through the ceremony. And it's been just as powerful as if we were in a space physically together. And, you know, I've experienced that by receiving them and also the training and then also holding and hosting the ceremonies myself. And so my preference is always to be together in physical person, of course. Sure. However, restrictions are what they are at the moment. And if I can reach more people and globally reach people with this medicine and, and by holding these ceremonies, of course, it's uh, that's also an amazing thing to do as well. Okay, so if if we come up with a, a plan and a date and set on an invite, would you be willing to do a chakras and shit with a cacao ceremony live? I mean, of course. Ah, sweet. <laughs> okay, cool. That's great. I, I've already thought that Lisa Lisa Marie um, should we should use her DJing skills and do ecstatic dance one day. Absolutely, an, that's ecstatic. a great thing to do after ceremony. Okay. So maybe, yeah. maybe we'll, maybe like my 10th episode or something we'll, or 25th episode or whatever, we'll, we'll start with the cacao ceremony, get Lisa to lead us through ecstatic dance and we'll just have a big old heart opening party. Sounds amazing. Yeah. That's, that's really, <laughs> I've got enough room in this garage for probably 20. Oh, you got a, oh, two meters. Eh, 10. <laughs> 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 um, Great. So anything else coming up for you right now, Joey, Joanna, Joe? Let me think. Um, nothing's springing to mind right now. Um, other than I'm continuing to teach online and in person in Ibiza. I'm doing one-to-one -one healing sessions with people as well. Um, and these can all also be done remotely. And so it would involve us having a chat like this. And then I would take them into like a healing receiving journey. And then we, then we finish by having a chat like this and, and having some really deep and profound experiences, which are assisting people to, again, tap into that, that center and come back to the truth. And, you know, trying to get rid of all the fear and all this stuff that's going on externally. So I'm super grateful to be in Ibiza and to be able to do this work. You know, it wouldn't be like when I was in London, it's quite a different vibe. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, the, the, the teaching and the ceremony and the one-to-one -one sessions is the kind of the, the depth of the work that I'm doing at the moment. And so if anyone wants to ask more about that or chat more about that, I'm more than willing to, to discuss. Beautiful. And <laughs> how can people best get a hold of you? Maybe Instagram or my website, loveyogi.co. Love. So L O V E Y O G I dot C O. Yeah, that's and, my website. And Instagram, and then, you have an underscore there somewhere, right? I think. Exactly. Yeah. So what is that? Love. Love underscore yogi. Okay. Yogi is Y O G I at Instagram. Fantastic. This is fun. I, 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 I realized we haven't spoken in quite a while and, and yeah. you it's funny you mentioned San Pedro. Do you remember the last time that we spoke? Do you remember the conversation? Um, wait, let me, let me see if I can remember. Was it just before I went to Peru or something? Uh, we might, I think we were texting a little bit or voice messaging, but okay. it, it was, it was Sunday of my ayahuasca weekend. Oh yes. <laughs> when was that though? <laughs> uh, July 7th or 8th. I was in Johannesburg, South Africa. It would have been July, 2019. Okay. So for some reason I felt compelled to call you and, and, and it was my San Pedro day, right, right in the middle of my San Pedro day. I remember now. I was very in tune with the earth that day. And, and, and what a powerful experience. If anyone's interested or open or, or thinking about um, plant medicine in general, do it with someone who's very, who, who, who respects the, the process, a proper shaman. Don't go, don't go black market downtown Vancouver. Hey, let's do some ayahuasca tonight. It, it's, it's too powerful and needs to be respected. Um, Absolutely. I think that's a, yeah. would you agree with that? 
Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, if it can be done on the land that it's been, you know, that it's been made and that's where the traditions are, then I would also recommend doing it in that way, for sure. Um, and just really feeling into the the shame and that you that you sit with. If it's a full body yes, and there's a deep calling, you you know. Whereas if there's a slight hint of mm, not sure about that, not sure about mm, no, that's that's just a no. Yeah, you know. You know. I, I agree. Yeah. And that's, and that's being, there it is being in flow once again. Right. Exactly. And I, and I kind of feel like with these, when plant medicines come into your field, I, I, I believe that, and this is the way I've navigated it. I've never really gone seeking or searching for it. It's kind of shown itself to me through the right person at the right yeah. time. And I've just kind of handed it over like I do with everything else in my life. And I just go, okay, you show me how, sure. when, who, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go. So yeah, that's my, my invitation for people that are kind of feeling it and wondering and asking and then just go, okay, show me. It's exactly the same way it happened to me, you know, yeah. through Linnell to Johan and next thing you know, I'm, I'm ripping up the coast of South Africa to get to Johannesburg. So um, well worth it, well worth it. Um, thank you. This is super entertaining and fun and it's good to connect with you again. And um, so good to see you again. Yeah. And, and your, your earrings, I got to say, spectacular. Wait. Are those hand carved oyster shells from Bali? What are those? Yeah, these are from Lisa Marie, oh. Electric Venus, Lali Malu. Lali Malu. I'm sure she'll be wearing hers when, in the interview that you do with her. Uh, I'm sure. I have my, I have my chain, but the, the little back broke, so I got to fix my chain, but I have one of those as well. So yeah, you look, you're looking great. Thank you, darling. I hope I've got them the right way around. She was always telling me off that I had them the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had to flip mine on my chest every time too. So, and I, I think, and in fairness, um, I think my zooms get recorded like mirrored because I, I, I think, so I don't know if I, if I hold up a sign, if it's read backwards. So if for some reason she sees this and says they're backwards, it might be because of my zoom being in reverse. <laughs> I don't know if that would matter, but sure <laughs> Let's, we'll leave it with that yeah, fair enough. <laughs> exactly so thank you so much again it's uh love love yogi dot co yeah and instagram l-o-v-e underscore y-o-g-i i'll put it in the comments on uh the youtube channel chakras and shit with an apostrophe apple and spotify and a few other podcast places that i've never heard of that have my podcast and you can follow me at chakras and shit. That's chakras with an S and shit with an S uh, <laughs> at Instagram or chakras and shit.com. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure and so good to see you again. Yeah, you too. And um, I will stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone. We will uh, see you on the next episode. Cheers.